Hello everybody, welcome to a brand new video. Today I wanted to go over some money making methods that you can do straight off of Tutorial Island. These are going to have no requirements to get started with. Granted some of these methods will get better when you have certain requirements, but you can do them straight off the bat. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoy and let's get started. Now coming in at number one is looting the ZMI altar. Now the ZMI altar is a special rune crafting method. You have to run through this dungeon and at the end you get a variety of different runes. Unfortunately, this takes up a lot of inventory space, so what a lot of people end up doing is just dropping it right on the ground. Now, most people are going to drop it right beside the altar, so you're going to need to run all the way down here. Now, there are some aggressive mobs, but there are so many people here that you will not really get attacked. You can bring a little food, but otherwise, not a big deal. So you will need to go to a specific world, and that is world 327, because that is the Orania Altar world. So once you run through the entire thing to the end of the dungeon, you will see there will be two spots that runes are dropping in, and they drop very frequently. Now if there's other people looting with you, you will have to fight for the drops. Now sometimes you might see that you pick up all the drops, sometimes you pick up none of them. That has to do with your PID, and there's not a whole lot you can do about that. However, I was here for just a few minutes, I already made about 50k just in picking up runes because they dropped soul runes blood runes, death runes, all the different types of runes on the ground, and they're consistently being dropped 100% of the time, and pretty much just in these two different spots. I would say you're probably going to get maybe 200k to 300k an hour, depending on how busy it is. You could make a lot more, but if you're fighting over the runes, you're going to get less. Coming in at number two is buying different clothes from Romedi's clothes shop in the Gnome Stronghold. Now to get here, you have to go to the first level of the Grand Tree. And in the northeastern corner, there is a clothes shop here. Now this money making method is a little inconsistent. However, almost all of the different items here sell for way more on the Grand Exchange. A lot of people in PvP use it for different colorings just so people can keep track of their clan members. So what ends up happening is a lot of people buy a ton of these items at once, but no one ever goes and actually buys them from the source, they just want to buy them right from the Grand Exchange. So especially items like boots or hats, those tend to sell for a lot on the Grand Exchange. I just price checked the blue boot here and it's worth over 1.1k on the Grand Exchange, and you can buy them for just a couple hundred GP just from the shop. You will need a little bit of starting cash for this, but otherwise no requirements. All you need to do is buy the items from the shop, and resell them on the Grand Exchange. You will need to be a little patient for this, but considering how little time this takes and how much money you can consistently make, makes this a very decent early game money making method. Coming in at number 3 is collecting planks outside the Barbarian Agility course. Now this is an extremely simple method, all you really need is a games necklace, and even that you can run here, uh, you only really need to teleport once. Just north of the Barbarian Agility course is a spawn of 4 planks, now planks are used a lot for construction, and quests and stuff like that. So planks will always have a value and there's four of them on the ground so you can fill up your inventory very quickly. Once you pick up the four planks you need to hop to another world and keep doing that until you have a full inventory. From here you can run to the Barbarian Outpost Bank because it's very close and deposit and repeat. Now the money per hour here is going to depend quite a bit on the prices of the planks. Currently I'd say you're going to get maybe 150k to 200k an hour which isn't amazing but considering it has no requirements at all you just have to run there and pick up the items and sell them on the Grand Exchange is a great way to get a cash stack started. You might notice that a lot of these methods involve looting or buying from shops, and there's a reason for that because they are the most effective methods that don't have requirements. There are very good early game money making methods, but a lot of those have at least some requirement of some sort, like, like a fishing level of 20 or something like that. But if you really have no money, no stats, picking up blanks outside the Barbarian Agility course is decent money. Coming in at number 4 is one of the most well known ways of making money right from level 3 pretty well. And that is picking white berries in the wilderness. Now there's a few things that you should know here. Yes, you can do this right from level 3 if you want. There are no requirements. You can run here, pick up the white berries. However, you're going to have a bit of a hard time. I would recommend having at least 20 or 30 HP. As well as if you can start Dragon Slayer and get the Anti-Dragon Fire Shield is going to help you a lot. Because the white berries are surrounded by lava dragons. And lava dragons can hit very high if you don't have an anti-dragon fire shield with you. The easiest way to get here is to pull the lever in Edgeville and run down east and through the gate. From here you just need to run a little bit to the south, go through the lava dragon gate, run a little more south and you should see the white berries there. Once you get to the white berries, the lava dragons can't attack you which is nice. The berries respawn very quickly as well. One other recommended item is a looting bag if you can get it. It's very easy to obtain, you can just kill rats in the wilderness and you will get one in about 30 kills. Generally, you can make around 300,000 coins to 600,000 coins depending on the price of white berries and what your inventory setup is. Right now, white berries are only worth about 500 GP each, so you're probably going to make maybe 300,000 to 400,000 in an hour, which is still amazing for a level 3 money making method. When white berries were valued at about 1,000 coins each, you could make around 600,000 coins to 800,000 coins here. 
if you need money for a bond or anything like that, picking white berries is the easiest and the most consistent way on earning that from a brand new account. Coming in at number 4 is tanning hides. Again, a very classic method, but good because of its versatility. There's a few different hides you can tan at the tannery. That is cow hides and dragon leather. You can do green dragon leather, blue dragon leather, black dragon leather, and even red dragon leather. The GP per hour is going to vary a lot based on what item you are doing. Now, this will require a bit of money. However, you can work your way up. If you just start with cow hides, start tanning cow hides for money, and then move your way up to green dragon hide, and then blue dragon hide and black dragon hide. The money per hour you're making tanning cow hides is probably only 100k to 150k an hour. Green dragon hides can be around 300,000 coins to 500,000 coins. Again, varying quite a bit on what the prices are. Generally, you can get between a 50 and a 100 GP margin per item you are tanning. Now, you're not going to be getting any experience from this, which is a bit of a bummer. However, considering there are no requirements to tan dragon hide, it's not that bad. Now the three items I'd recommend tanning are cow hides, green dragon hide, or blue dragon hide. While sometimes black dragon hide can be worth it, red dragon hide is never going to really be worth your time. It's too slow to obtain and too awkward to sell. And black dragon hide is just very expensive. Green and blue dragon hide will be the quickest to sell and generally has pretty consistent margins. Coming in at number 6 is buying from the Grand Tree Grocery Store. Now this is located very close to number 2 or near Rometty's Clothes Shop. Once again, it's located on the first floor of the Grand Tree. And the items you're going to be looking for in the Grand Tree Grocery Store are mainly pineapples. Right now they're worth around 200 GP each. Also, uh, pots of flour are worth 150 GP each. And there's just a ton of other items there that have value. There are no requirements to buy from this shop and there is a bank very close by. So you will need to hop between different worlds because there are other people doing this, but I'd buy out the pineapples, uh, the pots of flowers, sometimes some of the other obscure fruit, but those are going to be your main ones. This varies a lot, but I say you could get maybe 200,000 to 300,000 coins just buying pineapples alone from this shop. If you're not contesting other people, you can buy 10 pineapples per world, which adds up very quickly. Coming in at number 7 is picking bananas on Karamjet. Now this is one of the OG methods. Uh, you'd think it wouldn't be very good. However, in membership there's a different way to do this. What you'll need is an Amulet of Glory, a Ring of Dueling, and a bunch of baskets. The reason we're bringing the baskets is you can fill them up with 5 bananas. And not only does it help you save inventory space, but it also sells for more on the Grand Exchange. So what you need to use is the Karamja Teleport on your Amulet of Glory. From there, that's going to teleport you right to the Banana Patch. You want to bring 23 baskets and nothing else in your inventory. So what you do is you pick 5 bananas from a tree, and that's exactly the amount they have in the tree anyway, and then you hit Fill Basket. Right now, every banana basket is worth about 700 GP. So a full inventory is going to net you maybe around 20,000 coins almost. So you just have to keep repeating, picking up 5 bananas, clicking on fill basket, picking up 5 bananas, clicking on fill basket, until you have a fill inventory, you can teleport back to the Grand Exchange or to Castle Wars, and from there you just bank and repeat. At the current prices, I would say picking bananas is actually in the range of 300,000 to 400,000 coins an hour, just because right now the banana baskets, when I did it, actually sold for 800 coins each. Generally, probably closer to 200,000 to 300,000 coins, but still considering it has no requirements, and it's just one of the original ways that people made money, just a bit different. I think it makes it a fun and interesting way to start making money in pay to play. Coming in at number 8 is collecting the blue dragon scales. Now again, this inherently does not have any requirements. You can run here and pick up the blue dragon scales. However, having a few recommended stats or items will help you out quite a bit here. It's in the Taverly dungeon, so you have to run all the way through the passageway, which is going to take a while. And you will need to obtain the key along the way, but you only need to do that once. Having a high enough magic level to cast the file or teleport is going to be recommended because otherwise you'll have to run back out and that's not going to be great. However, the blue dragon scales right now are worth about 800 GP each. So when you fill up an inventory, you're looking at around 20 to 25k depending on the prices. Now, if you happen to have 70 plus agility, you can go through the agility shortcut, but I'm assuming you don't. So without that, you're probably going to make around 200,000 coins an hour. Once you get to the higher requirement, you can make even five. Once you get to higher requirements, you can get maybe 400,000 to 500,000 coins an hour just from picking up the blue dragon scales. Coming in at number 9 is looting in the bounty hunter world. Now this has absolutely no requirements. All you have to do is run to Varrock, go a little east to Edgeville, and there you will see a ton of people fighting. Now because there's so much chaos going on, a ton of items end up on the ground. Now there's ammunition items like amethyst arrows, rune arrows. Uh, crossbow bolts, stuff like that, that you can consistently pick up for money. However, whenever someone dies, uh, a lot of their items don't get fully looted, like their shards, rings of recoil, sometimes rarer items as well, depending on if it's a double death or something like that. 
So because of this, there's a lot of money you can make just by running around and picking up the items. Now you will have to watch out because people can attack you and your bounty hunter target will likely attack you if they're nearby. However, you're not going to be risking almost anything. You could bring a stamina potion to help you run around or an energy potion. However, if you're attentive and bring a bit of food, you probably won't die. And if you do, it's, it's really not that big a deal. It's going to vary a lot on how much money per hour you can make here, but I'd say you could easily get 300,000 to 400,000 coins if it's a busy time of day and you are on point with your looting. <laughs> Once again, you might notice that sometimes you pick up all the items and other times you don't pick up any. It's really going to depend on who is looting and who has pid over the other person. If you're not having any luck, I would just come back later or log off for a bit uh, to reset your pid. And last up here, coming at number 10, is looting at greater neck reels. Now, before I get started here, I would highly recommend asking people if you can loot there because it can be annoying and I understand that. However, personally, I don't mind it because I normally pick up items that I want right away. And if I don't want it, it's probably just going to get left on the ground and wasted. The reason this works so well is Greater Neck Reels drop a ton of alkable stuff. Greater Neck Reels drop a ton of alkable stuff and a ton of other valuable items. However, because most people are bursting it, they won't be on their normal spellbook. They might not be able to alk unless they have a diary done. So because of this, the inventory will sometimes fill up very quickly. And there's just other smaller items that people don't want regardless. And because they're being killed in such volume, you end up with a ton of items on the ground and you can loot them. Again, you should ask because some people don't like it, but assuming you've asked and they said it's fine, you can make a decent amount of money just looting the drops here. It's going to vary so much. I'm not going to put a GP per hour on it. I just bursted a full set of them and they dropped a rune med helm, a rune full helm, a rune square shield, like a ton of stuff. Drops lots of runes, sometimes herbs, and just a ton of valuable stuff consistently. Anyway guys, that is it. Those are 10 money making methods you can do at level 3 if you have any questions regarding it or any suggestions for another video, don't hesitate to leave a comment down below. Thanks for watching guys, I appreciate you, and I'll see you next time.